And now for our weekly news segment. Tony, Tony, Tony. Hi, hey guys. Hi, how's Tony, it going? what's up? I'm good. How are you guys? How are you guys? Good. good. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I like how when you mentioned, so is anybody, uh, like if you were to go on the streets in Dubai, I'm not saying that you have to do it, but what if like someone <laughs> went there and, you know, went in Dubai? <laughs> You're on your way? <laughs> Like you, know, right? I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready. Yeah. To, you know? So um, let's get into the news, guys. Um, we mentioned Coin Bureau and the fact that he moved to Dubai, but he still talks about Monero and he really likes Monero. So uh, let's watch this um, one minute, one minute video. I've spoken about it a few times. I haven't actually owned any for a long, long time. Is Monero? Oh, wow. really? yeah. yeah, back when the pri or OG yeah. privacy or whatever. Real yeah, OG, yeah. 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 Ex XMR, right? yeah. 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 It's easy to forget about. But, do you know, I was out last night with some people, including David Chow, oh, wow. uh, one of the original cypherpunks. I, I happened to meet him quite by chance because yeah. he's been in town for this Satoshi round here. Yeah. And Monero came up and, you know, he was talking about it and stuff, had some insights that were way over my head <laughs> but it did get it has got me thinking about xmr again and again it it kind of ties in with what i was saying about this lack of trust in in governments and yeah. in institutions and what have you i think i think everyone should have you know a, a a stack of a stack of some privacy coin everyone should be able to transact privately if they want it and i hear lots of anecdotal evidence about people in in London, apparently, as, as as much as anywhere else, I think there's a apparently there's a sort of thriving Monero wow. scene there where people transacting for certain uh, certain things. Oh, I, I like how he qualified his statement with, "I don't own any, uh, haven't." <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, he's in Dubai. <laughs> I don't touch the stuff, but everybody, but if everybody you were should too. have a, have a little stash just in case <laughs> your, your government. <laughs> Never heard of Monero. I, I don't even have any. You know, if it goes down, I don't even care. You know, you got to get David Shaw at Monero Topia, man. I had him on the list, but how do you even get in touch with the guy? I don't know. I know, I know. But um, let's try with Pomp next week. I'm gonna see him on Wednesday in Miami, so I'm gonna try to show him. Uh, at least like, yeah. hi. Yeah, we, we are we are trying to make contact with Coin Bureau. I mean, we've been in, we've been. We've, there's a connection we've, there yeah, that's just waiting. So like, we'll oh, see what happens. It, for years, we've been talking, so, but there's never been that moment where he comes We haven't show. lost hope. Yeah, we'll get it. It will happen yes. someday. But like, why Why would he move to Dubai? Like, why are these people going to Dubai to do crypto stuff? It doesn't seem like the, the land of crypto. Mm. Spreading the word there. Yeah. But I don't know. Things change, though, you know, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk about something that actually did change uh, in regards to uh, introducing a law and then taking it, taking it away. So mm -hmm. uh, things change, just like with uh, Portugal. Everybody wanted to move to Portugal because of um, zero capital gains tax. And they I think they introduced it now. Yeah. So things change so fast that uh, Vic is saying I don't own any either. <laughs> 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 yeah. Nice. All right. Now let's, uh, so for Valentine's Day, the uh, European Central Bank posted a tweet saying, roses are red, violets are blue, but we'll save the course and return inflation to, to, to 200%. I think they missed a couple zeros in, uh, in their tweet, but um, I thought it was funny. And then we had some uh, Monero bros, one of them being inevitable, XMR, and he tweeted, roses are red, violets are blue, Ponzi will continue, funds are not safe. <laughs> Nice, which is really funny. Uh, then let's talk about coin cards. So coin cards overall uh, usage: Bitcoin thirty four percent, XMR twenty twenty six percent. The same numbers: Canada thirty eight percent, Bitcoin. I think it went up, and XMR fourteen percent. I think that one went down. Ethereum on thirteen percent, which is interesting. Uh, they also use Lightning Network at two point nine percent. Uh, USA 66.4%, road to 70%. Are we going to see 70% soon? It's slowly creeping up. Bitcoin wow. 19%. It's such a huge disparity between XMR and Bitcoin. Wow. Ethereum 5.2%. Um, Lightning Network, Dogecoin 0%. Um, but it's it's interesting how in the USA, there's always such a huge huge disparity between XMR and, and Bitcoin. And I think they also... Monerica, man. Monerica. Monerica, and I think they also posted that every single order on Coin Cards USA today was placed with Monero. Oh. That was on February 16th. So, 
huge, huge, and uh, hopefully. Um, they, they're gonna, sponsoring. Yeah, they're sponsoring uh, Mineratopia again. Even though they yep. can't be there, they can't he's, be he's there. He's gonna do a, a quick. Uh, ten, we're gonna give him a quick ten minute talk remotely. Awesome. He's gonna give us his, yeah. his update on. My, Coin I love his pictures. Cool. His pictures are always funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's he's a, a cool picture. dude. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Um, great. So now let's talk about Nigeria. And uh, so we talked about the e Naira, which is a CBDC from Nigeria. Now the adoption rate was zero point five percent i think uh that that was that was the number that i've seen last time and now they're trying to make people to actually use the cbdc so what is the method that you can implement and the same thing that they have uh, tried in india uh is to actually take away cash make it no longer a legal tender and then push your cbdc obviously as you can see So they were almost entering you. Should be Dubai. Just run. Then, uh, now. I don't know why. Jeez. Um, yeah, but pretty serious riots. Uh, they attack ATMs. They block the roads. So people are pissed. They don't like it. Um, as we've seen in the numbers, like nobody was using the CBDC in Nigeria. Everybody wanted cash, and they took it away. So, and this is also be before the um, elections on on the twenty fifth of February. So. Uh, I think you, you would want to do something like that after you get elected and not before. Um, but yeah, people are, are angry and, and pissed. But CBDCs are not stopping. Russia is going to roll out the CBDC pilot with real consumers. Uh, so banks are going to select um, some consumers. So it's not for the general public yet, but that's for the first phase. Um, that's for the digital rubble and co rubble in collaboration with 13 local banks. Um, now they also talked about, I'm not sure if this refers to the fact that this, their CBDC might be gold backed and they have been hoarding a lot of gold, mm. uh, a lot of gold. So maybe their CBDC is going to be gold backed, which means that maybe they're going to have a digital, um, product backed by digital, uh, commodity by, by gold. So by gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. <laughs> They're incentivized to, to move faster, perhaps, than some other countries, given that, you know, they're basically being cut off from the SWIFT banking system, right? Yes, um, yes. So the CBDC is right up their alley, right? Especially, yeah, gold back and then try to get, you know, the world to, to adopt it. Uh, interesting. Yeah, since Russia's smart, uh, because when they were cut off by the whole world, they said, okay, well, if you want to, to uh, transact with us, you do it in gold. Um, or the rubble. So by that, they were hoarding a lot of gold, essentially. Mm. Uh, so they do have a lot of gold. Uh, Japan, Bank of Japan launched a CBDC pilot in before May. So Japan is also looking into CBDC. And they always mention like, yeah, if this fails, then we'll see what we're going to do. But if you spent, like, what if their CBDC pilot fails? What, they're going to go back to the traditional system and just stay with that? I don't think so. You know, it's, they need, everybody needs a digital solution. Uh, obviously, we opt for Monero, but they're not going to stop with the CBDC. If something doesn't work, they're going to try to um, to improve it. So the digital yen um, is coming. And uh, what I wanted to mention is that the Japanese authorities actually banned foreign stable coins. But now we're talking about um, incorporating, incorporating a regulation and lifting it. They might actually lift the ban on foreign stable coins. Uh, which came into law in 2022. So yeah, and, and Japan, Japan uh, banned privacy coins, much like Dubai, but back in the day, and I don't think that ban was ever lifted. Right? Uh, you still, you still cannot, I don't think, easily obtain uh, or legally obtain Monero in Japan. Mm, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about yeah. that, but I think so. Yes, yes, yeah. So crazy, and then uh, oh, because of regular. Records. What was that? Sorry. I said I'll go protest on those streets too. It'll be part of my my worldwide tour. <laughs> you got <laughs> we got to do a go go fund me. We got to see dog in Japan, <laughs> do it, guys. I'll do it. All the countries, um, but talking about pressure, uh, some privacy coins don't make it, or they have to change. And we have had some in the past. I think one was called Dark Coin, and they switched to being Dash Coin. Then one called Zen, which is to be called Zen Cash in May of 2017. 
I think they rebranded under the name of Horizon, and this is due to um, regulations and law enforcement, and they were talking about the shutdown of Tornado Cash and the rest of its lead dev, but they're worried and they are essentially removing the privacy aspect of it and then going back to um, other things within their within their blockchain. So pretty sad. Which really accentuates um, the importance of having a product. If you really want to have true true privacy uh, that has no backdoor, uh, then you can't have any any weak points. It has to be truly decentralized, uh, just like Monero. Like there's regulations coming left and right, uh, and I don't think Monero is going to become a oh okay public transparent chain because so and so no you know decentralized. <laughs> you're gonna have to go for the whole world you know so and if they want to go after me and then dog in sunita in new york then that's really not gonna do anything again <laughs> so yeah um these projects that are trying to like skirt the line and you know be privacy coins when you need them but not and, and align with the regulations of the state it's just they're creating useless technology at the end of the day and i think it's dangerous also because if you advertise privacy that means that someone else is right. might base their life on your product right right and ultimately why would anybody choose to use this thing if it's not really doing what it was intended to do it just doesn't make any sense right so interesting rebranded and we'll see where that's gonna go uh then let's talk about dr craig s Wright, oh, uh, yes. the creator of bitcoin he, uh, he blocked me today he blocked me shortly after i yeah that Kobe was actually Bitcoin. pretty funny you know what? I don't think you've seen this because I think he actually got back to one of the things that you said, and maybe you didn't see it. So it's going to be funny for you. Okay. Actually. Okay. Um, but yeah. So this guy claims to create Bitcoin. Uh, so he's Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, I suppose. He's a lawyer, economist, investor, mathematician, husband. Um, so he believes that Monero acts as a mixer, believes that Monero is not actually private. Um, so. And you know he wrote about it extensively. Then people got back at him in the comments. <laughs> um, and he explained how it really works. What I didn't really like is that whenever he would explain, sometimes he would use thing uh, words to put himself above someone else. For example, uh, Doug tweeted. <laughs> Let's actually go into this because it's uh, really, actually interesting. So Doug tweeted. Funny. Well, yeah. What did he tweet for? It was a response. Because he blocked him. So he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So XMR clearly focused exclusively on the provision of illicit services. So that's his thing. He believes that Monero it's solely for illicit services, solely for illicit activities. So Monero is only be used for crime. Only be used for crime. And then Doug said, well, Monero is focused on being private and untraceable by default, allowing people to use their money without surveillance or censorship. That's like saying Signal is focused exclusively in providing a tool for illicit communication. Commun communication, is that, is that what you believe too? Which is a perfect comparison. Beautiful. And then he said, Monero has Beautiful. nothing to do with the concept oh, yeah. of privacy. <laughs> Yeah. What is up? Monero has not so now it has, doesn't have anything to do with privacy because we don't even understand what privacy is, guys. It's almost like nothing. Guy, he's on another planet. So I'm not sure. It's purely designed for money laundering. So a non shop. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, your service um, enables illicit activities. Um, <laughs> um, if you're saying, and he, and he never answered my question. So what is this take on Signal? So Signal is purely designed for illicit communications. Try not using a non-sequitur. <laughs> Signal is encrypted. Encryption does not mean illicit. Monero is purely designed for illicit activity. Try being less dishonest in your approach. Okay, I, I got to try to be more like Craig Wright, the honest Craig Wright. If I, if I could somehow summon that within myself to be more like him. Perhaps. I think the first step is to put creator of Monero in your, <laughs> <laughs> in your handle. <laughs> <laughs> that, and I and I was being trying to be so nice to him, and then I said, um, yeah. in "My next tweet, I was like, well, why don't you come on the show? And we'll talk about." It. And then he blocked me after that. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Earnestly... You should like it. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything specifically so that I could see his tweet and talk about it. <laughs> you, you, uh, you, he retweeted me and said something. You, you had yeah. Some tweet. What is that? Okay. Let me. Okay, because then I want to. Oh, Monero promote. Go ahead, do your thing. Yeah, no, no, let's uh, let's do that, and then I want to mention one funny thing. It's a good segue.
because I think okay, let's just go on his profile because I can't find it. Because he did mention you. No, I saw it there. It was a retweet. I think it was it's like Monero no. promoters are dishonest or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Monero promoters are seem to be universally dishonest be, between special pleading straw men and falls because typological arguments they resort to loaded questions and eventually bandwagon effects. However, the misuse oh, so that, that, that's why he blocked me. So he blocked me before he tweeted that, so I can respond to it. Interesting. Okay, that's really. Yep. And then the misuse of the word private applies. Monero is not private. If you understand private requires legal frameworks to be followed, then you will start to see that private and secret outside of law and different things. Um, it's taking it philosophically, in my uh, opinion. But if you can see what someone is doing, I think that's a private matter, right? And it's there's nothing more deep than that. If I can see how you spend your money, then that money is uh, private. And then he talked about, again, uh, Monero is used for uh, illicit activities and money laundering, uh, drug crimes. But now let's talk about how you can use um, this, uh, <laughs> this Monero uh, for illicit um, <laughs> if you go to pay tickets and you go to your general admission ticket, you click on it, and I'll give you guys a tip. If you want to save 10% um, off, you add to card, then you go to a card, you view your card, and then if you write Tony, because I have my own code, you get 10% off. That's going to be $89. There you go. <laughs> That's an illicit uh, purchase you're about to make there, obviously. Naughty Tony. If you're, if you're using Monero, it has to be illegal. You're... Um, I was obviously going to pay in uh, Dogecoin, guys. I wasn't going to pay in, <laughs> in Monero. <laughs> Uh, I would love to int like talk with. Obviously, it wouldn't go anywhere, but I would just try to. He, he doesn't. He just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense his to me. Whole, his whole being just doesn't make sense. His whole take on crypto. Does, what actually what makes less sense to me? And maybe BSV people, if you want to. I mean, I, I really don't want to have that talk again. But <laughs> let, there's a lot of BSV people that are into obviously BSV, and then are also into Monero. Like a lot of people in mm -hmm. the Narco Poco crowd, they're like BSV people, but then they also like Monero. So how do they weigh this with the fact that Craig Wright thinks it's a complete, you know, scam tool that's only used for illicit purposes that should be made illegal? How how are you a BSV person? I guess so. The so Craig Wright is the minority opinion in BSV potentially? And like the majority opinion in BSV is that Monero is okay. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. I don't get it. <clears throat> I don't get it either. And it's just a bold claim of creator of Bitcoin. It's such a strong claim to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ignoring all that, obviously, which is, you know, yeah. the yeah, 800 fun. gorilla pound gorilla in the room. But still, you know, it's, it's fun to interact with him and kind of understand, <laughs> understand what he's ultimately trying to say. You, ignoring the fact that he's, you know, complete scammer pretending that he invented or maybe he did. who knows the world yeah. is a weird place but then if that's the case then so satoshi was not a cypherpunk guys that's that's apparently what he's saying completely not a cypherpunk does not believe in untraceable digital cash wanted to create a completely traceable perfectly traceable system yeah but uh having said that don't go to uh don't go to hungary and take down the statue okay Leave it there still. <laughs> so, oh my gosh! Even if that's so, then don't don't remove that it. That is there. hilarious. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I I think we'll have a, uh, some BSV people down at Monerotopia, I'm sure, because nice. Crypto Vigilante will be down there, and he kind of bring brings that element. So maybe beautiful. we'll continue to have have that conversation. Yep, beautiful. Uh, now let's mention one uh, Monero maximalist that wrote, yo, 10%, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention for this week is Chain Analysis Crypto Crime Report for 2023, which does not even mention crypto coins or Monero, just mention, uh, mentions Bitcoin, the table of contents, introduction sanctions, ransomware, money laundering, stolen funds, Oracle manipulation attacks, darknet markets. But if we do... Uh, if we type control F, 
and with IP in Monero, there's no mentions. Now, is would, would that be because you can't see, obviously you can't see the amount, so you can't see how much exactly was purchased with Monero, or I'm curious to, to why it wasn't even mentioned, or not even, I think, yeah, privacy coins, nothing, not even a single mention, so. Yeah, it's not mentioned because they're, they're a tool, uh, they can't offer a service that integrates with it, so they have, uh, they have no, they have nothing to sell with regards to Monero, that's why it's not mentioned. They can't be like, look, and it, this also works for tracking and tracing Monero. Monero. It doesn't. Yeah. So it's, let's pretend it doesn't exist. And then, we, <laughs> you know, uh, prevent <laughs> all money laundering and everything else with yeah. Bitcoin. And there's plenty of uh, mentions uh, of Bitcoin. And I think I told the story, but I was in Miami. I was in a Solana party and I was talking to this guy and he didn't work for chain analysis. He worked for Elliptic. An, Elliptic. Yeah, yeah. And I asked him, like, Okay, so we can track Monero, and he's like, "Yeah, we can track Monero, we can track Ethereum." And I said, "What about Monero?" He's like, "Yeah, no, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we right. can't. We just can't." So, this was this this week's news, everybody. Um, the links are in the description if you want to check it out. Again, ten percent using the promo code Tony. If you want, I brought it up to twenty, so twenty percent. Twenty percent. Okay, Tony, the special twenty. I did. Wow. Okay. Well, it's pretty much impossible to forget the uh, the code too. Yeah, it's just exactly. Tony. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> For general admin because VIP tickets uh... are <laughs> perfect. Out. Okay. Well, the maximalist wrote WTF, so I think he purchased it when it was 10%. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Let me <laughs> that's funny. I'll get I'll give you the the the, the money back. <laughs> just DM me. All right, all right. That was great. Yeah. Um, so nice. normally this is the viewers on. Thanks, Tony. That thank was, you. Yes, yeah, stick thank around. You guys. Okay. Bye. Um, all right, awesome. Yeah, thank you.